Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 20 years, as she's developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this evening. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We have a boatload of callers on hold tonight. I'm so excited to talk to everybody and see what questions they have and see what answers we come up with. And uh, update of what's going on around here, I got a shower invitation to my future daughter-in-law Mallory's bridal shower today in the mail. It was very exciting. My One of my best friends, Deborah, is hosting a bridal shower at her home, and several of my friends are flying in from all over the country, and the funny thing is several of them are on the same plane. So I said, maybe I should let Southwest know that it's going to be a party plane with all them on the same plane. And my sister-in-law who lives in Chicago, a lot of them are starting in Columbus and then they're switching in Chicago. And then my sister-in-law Gail gets on in Chicago. And I said, do you think we should alert Southwest? And she said, no, but I hope we don't make the evening news for disrupting the flight. (laughs) So it's going to be hilarious with having, having all them in. Wedding stuff's really starting to kick into gear down here, which is very fun. Wedding day is, May 11th for my only child. So I'm really excited about that. We uh, are doing the first show of the month, and you know what that means. I give away a free one-hour session, private session, to some lucky winner, and it's valued at $155. And this month, the winner that was picked out of the hat is Ms. Her, her handle on um, – iTunes or I on her Apple phone on her iPhone for an iTunes review. She goes under Ms. Martinez to you, which I thought was funny. And she said, really real, not just from the other side info she gets for you, but answers from hard questions in life that you need to know. And here, here's an all cap. Thank you, Julie, for my reality check, Jennifer Martinez. So, Jennifer, you have won a free one-hour session with me worth 155 bucks. Email me, julie at askjulieryan.com. We'll figure out a date and time that works with your schedule, and I really look forward to talking with you. I pick somebody every month out of a, out of a hat, and um, somebody has just joined us, so let me see if I can, can mute them. And, I, and what happens is I... Um, I do that for a couple of reasons, you guys. I do it because it's a thank you to all of you for listening and being a part of this community, number one. And number two, I do it because I know $155 is a lot of money to a lot of people. So if you want a session with me and you can't afford $155, just sign up for the drawing and you might win a free session. And to sign up, all you need to do is follow me on Instagram at AskJulieRyan. Write a review about why you like the podcast on iTunes at Ask Julie Ryan and subscribe to my blog at AskJulieRyan.com. And then you too could be entered into the drawing. So that'll be fun. Uh, Start my class, Angelic Attendance, on Saturday. I'm so, so, so excited about that. We have a couple of spots left. So for those of you that are listening, if you want to join us in this session, it's going to be four Saturdays, two hours a Saturday online going to be fabulous we will have a ball doing it and i think it will change a lot of people's lives everybody that's involved so really looking forward to that with that let's go to the phones and see who we have on the phone with us this evening i believe our first caller is helen hi helen 
Hi, Julie, Helen. this is Diamond. I think you unmuted, oh. unmuted me. Oh, okay. Well, I have you marked as Helen, but okay. Hi, <laughs> Diamond. And I'm Hi. supposed to talk to you. How are you, girl? No wonder I couldn't find you. You were under an alias, <laughs> Helen. <laughs> A.K.A. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a nickname for Diamond, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. How are you? I'm been good. What about you, Julie? I'm well, thanks. Well, tell everybody where you're calling from, please. I'm calling from Delaware. All right. What's going on up there? Oh, nothing yet. Been enjoying the great weather, but now I'm getting ready to go back to being cold. Uh huh. Well, it is February. You know, it's supposed to be cold. It is. Yeah. I got told. Although, I did go for a walk in shorts and a t-shirt down here in Sweet Home Alabama today, so it was pretty nice. Tease me, tease me. I know <laughs> my red my red bud trees are in bloom. So just letting you know, just saying, just saying. I love it. Come on down. What can, what you, you got for me tonight? You got a question? Yes, I do. So Julie, my question is: I received a call from the detective for my daughter. Um, previous phone call, you and I spoke about my daughter was murdered in 2012, and the detectives want me to come down to their office tomorrow. So my question is, is this visit going to help towards my solving my daughter's case? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got a yes before your question was even out. Awesome. And one more thing pertaining to her case, I also have to go to court on February the 21st uh, for my grandson for the same situation. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything that I need to do prior to going to court? Um, is it safe to go? Like, I just, like, when I think about that day, it just gives me funny feelings in my stomach. So I want to know if you see anything. Is there something I need to do? or What's coming in? For that, for your court date on the 21st, Diamond, is uh, to meet with the lawyer before your court date. Do you have a lawyer that you're using, or is it a court-appointed lawyer? I don't have a lawyer yet. I'm trying to get a lawyer now um, through my job. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Okay. You have a high plan, like a pay pay here, um, employment. So I'm trying to go in that route. Okay. All right. Email me. Julie at AskJulieRyan.com, I may be able to help you with that. So email me and, okay. and we'll, we'll talk offline about that. But well, what, I'm getting, what I'm getting very strongly is for you to meet with the lawyer before you go to court. Okay. Okay. Because sometimes court-appointed lawyers, uh, you, you don't get to meet with them and they show up and you have no clue what they're doing. So okay. you need to be part of the strategy. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm getting. All right, thank you. But I, but I think that will go well, too. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Let us know what happens. Will do. Have a great right. night. Take care. You, too. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, let's see who else we got. I believe Janet is our next caller. Hi, Janet. Oh, hi, Julie. Um, nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from um, Lexington, South Carolina. Oh, terrific. Well, good. What's going on down there? Um, well, we had a beautiful day, but I was calling in questioning about medical scanning. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some medical issues, and I wonder if you could shed some light. Sure, sure. What's going on? Um, well, I have a few issues, uh, one of which the recent one is um, my my upper back. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I was diagnosed with a seizure disorder some years ago, and I have to go off the medication because my insurance won't pay for it anymore and see if you get anything there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what I'm going to do, Janet, is, is what I call a medical scan, and how that works is I'm going to raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit because we're all spirits attached to a body having a human experience. And when we're in human form... We vibrate more slowly just because the body has mass. And so by raising my vibrational level, I've learned how to do this. I turn it on and off at will. So I'm going to be teaching people in my class on Saturday. Um, What I'm able to do is I'm going to connect with your spirit in South Carolina. I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to watch a laser beam go from my body here in Birmingham. It's going to hook into you, and then I'm going to shoot energy from your feet up through the top of your head, Janet, 
And it will be as if I'm looking at a hologram of you in my mind's eye. And then it will be the equivalent of what I'm seeing as uh, simply like a X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI. So we'll be able to see what's going on and I'll describe to you what I'm seeing. So let me get you on my radar. Just take a radar. It will just take a second. So here we go. Okay, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. All right, you're being turned around. The hologram that is you in my mind's eye is being turned around. And let me see what's going on. Okay, I do see inflammation. It goes from about your neck where your shoulders start, and it goes down to mid-back. So inflammation, Janet, just looks to me like red fog. And uh, I need to get underneath it so that I can see what's going on. So I'm going to apply anti-inflammatory energy and get that removed so I can see what's happening. So you have a little bit of scoliosis. You have a little bit of a curvature in your spine. Has anybody told you that? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing. You curve a little bit to the right there in that part of your back. And so what I'm going to do is an energetic healing that mimics in some ways spinal fusion surgery. I see rods, energetic rods, get placed. One's placed on the left side of your spine. One's on the right side of your spine. The one on the right is very very slowly moving that spine over to the left so that it's straight up and down. Because, you know, when you look at somebody from behind, their spine is supposed to be straight up and down. But if you look at somebody from the side, that's when you see the curve in the neck and in the lower back. So we're straightening out the spine, and and energetically, the spine is heated and softened. It reminds me of how a, uh, somebody making something out of pottery, like a vase or a bowl or something, they have to use pottery that's pliable, you know, clay. And then uh, when they've got the shape done, then they put it in the oven and they fire it so it'll become solid. And that's what I see happen with the spine. And then I'm shooting energy through you again, and... And your spine looks straight. So that can that hopefully will help relieve some of the inflammation and some of the pain you have and um, make you feel better. Well, thank you. You are most welcome. Thanks for joining us this evening. Love having you on the show. Thank you. Um, do you see anything about the seizure disorder? Let me go. I'm going to put you on mute, Janet. I'll put you on hold. Let me get the other callers on, and if okay. I have time, I'll come back to you. If I don't, then either call back in next week, and we can talk about that, or schedule a private session, and you can do that on my site, AskJulieRyan.com. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. All righty. Let's see who we have next. I believe it's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for taking my call. You are so welcome. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. So, wondering if you can give me insight on why I'm gaining so much weight and having trouble losing it or insight on how I can lose it. Yeah. What will work to help help that. Sure. Where are you calling from, Jennifer? Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Terrific. I talked to somebody, I did a consult with somebody in Saudi Arabia this morning and uh-huh. her accent, and she, she was a Saudi citizen and was born and raised uh-huh. in Saudi. Her accent, her American, her American accent was, was so pristine and her English was so perfect. And I said, you sound like you're from Iowa. And she said, well, what's that mean? And I said, people from Iowa don't really have a distinctive accent. You can't really tell where they're from. I said, it's mm-hmm. just a Midwestern generic accent. And this girl from Saudi, she's in her mid-20s, 26 or so, and called in for an appointment. And um, I said, oh, my God, you sound like you're from Iowa. She said, I don't know about Iowa, but I think I need to go visit. I said, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> just not now it's like 20 below she probably that was so <laughs> yeah can you imagine coming from saudi it's probably hot yeah. over there i would imagine <laughs> so all right jennifer what's your age how young are you 42 okay all right let me get you on my radar let's see what's going on and then we'll go from there so here we go here mm-hmm. comes my laser beam 
from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading out to you in Iowa, where there isn't an accent. Okay, got you. All right, shooting energy. So you have a lot of inflammation in your body. Uh, Mm -hmm. Your whole body is inflamed. And again, what I what I was telling Janet, our our last caller is just looks like red fog, but you got it over your whole body, girl. Mm. So let me let me get that reduced and see what's going on with that. Are you being exposed to mold? Do you have do you have, have you had leaks in your house or your office or wherever you work? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, you ha- you I are am allergic being, to mold. Yeah, you're being exposed. You've got mold exposure you've got mold in your system let me get it out i can see mold spores in your system that can contribute to the weight gain issue uh okay. and also inflammation what's going on so i'm seeing yeast too mold and yeast go hand in hand so let me get that cleared out yeast get an overabundance of yeast from being on medication um that's usually the the number one reason eating non-organic food because mm-hmm. the uh, pesticides that are sprayed on our food supply, you know, kill bugs. And so mm-hmm. we ingest that and then it kills bugs in our gut biome. So those are your big issues. If you Google um, yeast overgrowth, you'll learn a lot on that. And yeah. also, also mold and shippy. MD, S-H-I-P-P-Y-M-D is, she's a mold expert. She's a, a physician who specializes in helping people get over mold. Check out her site, her website, Ann Shippey, okay. MD. And um, you may want to consider scheduling a private session too, and then we can just okay. really do a deep dive and get everything figured out with that. But in the short run, stay away from sugar, stay away from fermented foods, stay away from alcohol, uh, eat low on the food chain, try and eat organic as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from processed foods, that kind of thing. Yeah. I've I've been trying in the last couple of weeks um, just because of a hormone imbalance, but now I really need to. (laughs) Right. Well, we can on it. Yeah, we'll address all of that when we do a private session. We'll have a whole hour, and let's do mm-hmm. that. We can explore all of that and go into go into more detail. But right now, Great. the contributing factors I'm seeing are mold and yeast, which are pretty common. Pretty common. Yep. Yeah. Well, well okay. thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> have a good night. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Okay, yeah. let's see who else we have. Can you hear us? I, I I don't know. Who are you? Oh, you do. Hear Yo. Oh. Hi. Hi. Yeah, oh, hi. Are we talking? Yeah, you're talking, but I'm going to put you on mute, and then I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, thanks. Okay, you nice. bet. All right, there we go. So I've got somebody, 706 area code. Who's that? Uh, that's Jamie. Hi, Jamie. How are you, girl? Hi. Good. What you doing? Um, well, I'm trying to get you off speaker. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Please um, tell everybody where you're calling from. I am calling from Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. All righty, where all those pretty azaleas are. That's right. Yeah. Well, good. And you signed up for my class, too. I'm so excited to have you in I it. I did. Yep. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Me too. Uh, me too. Yep. You got a question for me? I do. I'm just calling to follow up on our uh, two-hour session we had the other day. Yeah. And you um, had healed some spine issues and a brain issue and a yeast issue. And afterwards, I was very sore as if, like, you really did do some sort of spinal surgery or something. Mm-hmm. And um, I've had like a foot fasciculation and my left eye has been fasciculating and weird and then a rash. So I was wondering if this was like a normal reaction um, to have like a detox reaction or if it's something totally separate. 
let me let me get you on my radar and let's see what's going on. Okay. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam to Augusta. Got you going in. Okay, yeah, you're inflamed. All right, so the rash is probably yeast related, and that is absolutely mm-hmm. going to be die off of the yeast. Sometimes that can right. ramp up. When all those critters are starting to die off, and as you as you can imagine, they release their toxins into the body, mm-hmm. so the body's going to be clearing that out. That's what that rash is from. If you can get an okay. antifungal cream, Jamie, mm-hmm. um, for you know antifungal creams or athlete's foot creams, jock itch creams, right. the monostat vaginal yeast creams. If you just rub that on your skin, it's an antifungal. It will go away with that. Okay. Stay stay with what I was talking with Jennifer about, you know, stay mm-hmm. with whole foods, stay away from processed stuff, sugar, fermented things. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as the twitching, I'm getting that you need more magnesium. You need to up your magnesium level. Okay. 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 And that, that's all that's going on with that. All right. Cool. Yeah. Easy fix. Thank you. Okay. Right. Well, I'll talk to you in our class on Saturday. Looking forward all to right. it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see who else we have. I believe Novella is next. Hi, Novella. Hello. How are you? I am good. I'm good. This is Novella from San Andreas, California, and we actually had some snow, so we're very cold here. Um, anyways, I'm calling about Boswell. We have chatted about Boswell, uh, my dog. And yeah. I'm just wondering if he's ready to go. He's throwing up daily. He's getting thinner. Um, I was just, and he lost his friend, the cat, who was also 14 years old last week. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. All right. Let me get Basil on my radar. I'm going to connect him through you. So Laser Bean's going to connect him to you. Got you. Got Boswell. Boswell's spirit is out of his body. So like with humans, if you if any of you listening go to my website, AskJulieRyan.com, you'll see the 12 Faces of Transition tab. And when you click on that, you'll see graphics of what happens, what it looks like as we're dying. And the spirit detaches from the body and hangs onto the top of the head. And it looks like a bubble. Novella looks like a cartoon caption bubble. And uh-huh. that's, that's what I'm seeing with Boswell. So let's ask okay. him some questions. Um, so, Boswell, are you ready to go? Yes. Are you in pain? Yes. What do you need? More water. More okay. water. Okay. He keeps drinking water and throwing up water um, yeah. and throwing up his food. Um, sometimes we think he's dead on the couch and then he opens his eyes. So we're, we're kind of, it, it's oh. been going on for a while. We feel very bad, but we don't want him to be uncomfortable, you know. Uh, yeah. if it's, I keep asking him if it's time to go to heaven and he just wags his tail and walks off. <laughs> Yeah. So are you considering so, euthanizing him or are you not? Yeah, that's, that's, not that's what we're thinking. We're just kind of sitting on the fence with, well, is it, it's hard to tell because he runs around and he actually seems to be fairly okay at times. He's not mm-hmm. whining. He, he's, you know, functioning okay, not bad for, for his being blind and a brain tumor and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so well, let's that's ask my him question. To, let's yeah. ask him. Yeah. So I love his name, Boswell, like Charlie's Angels Boswell. Is that where you came up yep. with that? Yeah, Boswell. Okay. Yep. Hilar- hilarious. Uh, Boswell, do you want Novella to euthanize you? He's saying not yet. Okay. But he wants more water. He just asked for more water again. Okay. Yeah, so he's been having water issues. We keep going there. He keeps drinking and drinking and drinking, which is a sign that he's not functioning, you know, very well. So, okie dokie. Well, we'll just hold on a little bit longer for Boswell. Okay. Thanks for All calling right. Enjoy the snow. Oh, thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Novella. And I believe our next caller is Miss Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi, how are you? Let me get hey, you off. Your girl. I'm fine. How are you? Great. Thanks. Please tell everybody where you're calling in from. Queens, New York. Queens. What you got for me tonight? Okay. Um, I requested a, a week vacation starting on my birthday. Uh, that's going to be in April. And there's always an issue in my job. I work for Youth Development Center. I'm a data mm-hmm. entry person. And there's, uh, 10 years ago, we had this special group of kids that that they um, that my company acquired grant for, and we service particular 
uh, set of youths uh, who have special needs, a special mm-hmm. problems. And mm-hmm. there's always got to be a report at the beginning of the month. And I want to go on vacation um, starting on my birthday. And in the past, mm-hmm. I was able to do it. And I work hard. I have four weeks vacation I have to take before June 30th or else I'm going to lose it. Because in mm-hmm. my company, it's, it's fiscal year from mm-hmm. July 1st to June 30th. Mm-hmm. If you don't use your vacation by June 30th, that's it. It's gone. You can't get it back. Mm-hmm. Do you see trouble? Will I be able to take my vacation? What, what the, will I be able to have the, the week off? Which, uh, which so, my birthday is on a Saturday. Okay, okay, what's your birthday day? April 27th. Okay. Will Patty be able to take vacation the week of her birthday? I get a yes. Okay, so there's not going to be any problems. Hmm. Do you see I any yes. problems? Okay, so the, but the, you don't see any problems like uh, like they, the, my boss doesn't want me to take it because, you know, of the month. But I'm always staying overtime a lot, you know, and they also like, you know, I don't need to stay overtime. I, I stay until 630 every day and I don't get paid for it, but I have work and I want to get it done. Yeah, I don't see any problems at this point, Patty. But, you know, things that are in the future, they're fluid. Right. So that means that it can change because there are a bunch of different variables that could come into play that could change the outcome. But at this moment in time, I'm getting that you will, you will be able to celebrate and whoop it up on your birthday while you're on vacation. Oh, que- a curious question. Um, my cousin just had a baby in April, um, in, um, right to, uh, two weeks before Christmas and mm-hmm. they're debating when they're going to do the baptism. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about that. They really can't do it before, um, Easter because my my cousin's wife is from Brazil and her parents are up here for four months but they're supposed to leave at the end of April and my cousin's wife's brother is coming at the beginning of April. When do you think the party for the baptism will be held? Or when well, will the party? Well, the party for what is it? Your your nephew, your niece? Say that again. No, no, our cousin's uh, my cousin's daughter, Leah. Mm-hmm. Cousin's daughter. When will the party for Patty's cousin's daughter be held? I get May right now. Oh, okay. Because uh, because they have to do it before the parents leave. That's what I'm saying. They're going to leave at the end of April. And okay. Well, I'm, right now I'm getting May. That may be what the calendar at the church is and maybe they're waiting to see if something comes up or something. But right now I get May. All right. So as long as it's not, I don't want it to be on my birthday because I need to do some stuff on my birthday. It's my vegan. I want to do my vegan diet on my birthday. So I just don't want to, you know, I didn't want, I was going to go on vacation before, before my birthday, but it falls on Easter and that will mess up my diet. Uh, Okay. Well, keep us posted. Let us know what happens because we want you to be able to eat those little bonbons at that christening party that they'll have. Yes, I'm Italian. They no, no, that's for the weddings. They they do the um, they do the, the um, you know the um, the almond with different yeah. colors. Right. Yeah, but don't they have Bumble- don't they have play but like tables of cookies? No, that's for the weddings. And in okay. Italy, they have uh, the day. But the Brazilians, they, they make these, uh, oh, I love these, these coconut balls. Oh, they're delicious. Okay, send me the recipe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have to ask rest. my cousin that. Okay. Thanks, right, thank you. Take Bye-bye. Care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, funny. Okay, let's see who we have next. I believe it's Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. You are um, so welcome. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Florida. Okay, terrific. Yeah, nice and sunny, cool yeah, today. Good. Um, I've been having issues with uh, my urinary infections for quite some time, and um, most often when you go for uh, a test, very often it shows nothing, and mm-hmm. a lot of the doctors don't even bother doing cultures. And mm-hmm. then I have to go back and, you know, they, I have to insist, and then it usually turns out something is going on. The last time I had a, a full urinalysis, they picked up protein in the urine, a lot of abnormality, um, 
and they're saying there could be kidney issues. <clears throat> Back in October, I had to go to ER with severe pain in my upper left kidney, which they thought was um, kidney stones because the pain was severe and I was on four painkillers before no. it, it went away. Turned out they said nothing was showing. Mm-hmm. And I'm still going through this, and I have to go for a cystoscopy in a few weeks. But in the meantime, um, I'm, I still had to go to um, um, urgent care, and I'm waiting for the results of culture once again. So it's just round and round. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm in a lot of pain most of the time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and getting up during the night in pain and running to the bathroom. So I don't mm-hmm. know, you know, what to think at this point. Okay. Well, well, I've got you on my radar already while you were talking, and I can see your bladder looks like raw hamburger, girl. I mean, it's just raw. So Inflammation. Inflammation. And, uh, and so when you are up going to the bathroom, does it feel like a UTI, like it hurts when you pee, or, it yes. just, or your yes. bladder just hurts? Yes, it or hurts both. very much. It hurts. I have to get up immediately. I have a lot of pain in the middle, and okay. then um, when I go, then it, there's a spot that hurts more than the other area. Yeah. Then it's relieved for a few hours, and it's back again yeah. anywhere from two to four times a night. Mm-hmm. And the only thing they've offered me so far is uh, a relax in medication, which I haven't mm-hmm. tried yet. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm still waiting, as I said, on the culture to come okay. up. So what I, what I'm getting on this is yeast can cause this, an overabundance of yeast. And I've had this myself, not to the degree that you have, but I've had it myself where it's it's just painful, yes. and it's painful in the bladder area, and it's painful Sitting, in that walking, whole anything. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's caused by being on different medications, um, usually antibiotics, steroids, that kind of thing. You've probably been on lots of rounds of oh, those yeah. with them trying to treat you. And so it's a yeast thing. The yeast is able to grow in abundance. And then what happens is what I'm seeing in your bladder is that the yeast turns into kind of a paste almost, as if when you're making a roux because you're making a, a gravy or a sauce and you mix yes. flour and water together and it gets pa- a paste, you know, before you add the drippings to it. That's what the inside of your bladder looks like. And that just irritates the daylight out of your bladder. So what I've done is an energetic healing on you, Mary, where I've added this energetic cream. It reminds me of thick white face cream, mm-hmm. for instance, the Nivea cream that's in that okay, blue jar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to soothe it. It's an anti-inflammatory. It will soothe those tender tissues. All of all of your urinary tract is just completely inflamed. Your urethra, the whole thing. Is the yard. kidney too or just well, the bladder? Well, it's more bladder. It's mm-hmm. more bladder. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've applied anti-inflammatory energy there. I've applied that cream there. I would love to do a private session with you. Let's spend an hour getting this cleared up we can we can really do a deep dive and figure out what's you know what's going on and what needs to happen to get you well but um that's what's going on i believe that's so what i'm saying nothing that they can really pick up as far as yeast i don't think they're going to pick it up i don't think, think they're going to pick it up and it's just toxicity they're going to they're going to scope you and they're going to see how inflamed you are but they're just going to give you more meds uh-huh. so yeah i Go to AskJulieRyan.com, schedule a private session. Let's do a deep dive on this. Okay, I'll be looking at you Get you feeling better. better. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank Hope you, you feel Lily. better. Thank Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. All righty. Our next caller is Lawanda. Hi, Lawanda. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks how are you? taking my call. Oh, I'm okay. Welcome. Please tell everybody where you're calling in from. Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock. Well, good. You got a question for me? Yes, I just kind of want to see if you see anything going on. With okay. Me in- Meaning, like, in what capacity? Um, just anything, just with my health or finances, um, job related, just anything. If you see anything, just for time's sake, if you could pick one area and ask a question, that really helps because I have I got a whole bunch of people. I'm 
still need to get to. So if you can um, just give me like... What hell? Do you see anything going on with my hair? So you want me to just scan you real fast, a medical scan and see if yeah. anything's happening? Okay. All right. So let me get you on my radar. Okay. Got you. All right. Shooting energy. Okay. So you're being turned around to the back. Are you having low back pain? You're, you have no, inflammation no. in your low back. Okay. Okay. Good. So I, sometimes... When I see things, and the energy always goes where it's most needed first, LaWanda, sometimes we can head off symptoms at the past before they become a problem. So as you heard me say earlier where I see red fog over body parts, uh-huh. that's, just an, that's just an indication of inflammation there. So what I'm watching happen is I'm watching a chiropractic adjustment happen. You're kind of a twisted sister at the moment. <laughs> it's really easy to fix. Do you have a chiropractor that you go to by any chance? No, ma'am, but I'm okay. really anemic. They, the doctor just called me this week and told me that my blood is extremely low and I need to get on some urine tablets. She said I'm severely anemic. Huh. Okay. That's not what came up first. What came up was the low back inflammation. So, um, you know, we can do the anemia let me see what's going on with that. Do you have low blood sugar as well? No, ma'am. I hadn't been diagnosed with it. Okay. That's what came in. The low blood sugar is um, contributing to your anemia. And I don't know that the two go hand in hand. That would be something to Google. I would have to Google that. But I get that your blood sugar is low. Okay. That doesn't mean go eat a bunch of Snickers bars. It means, you know, I mean, seriously, it means eat a healthy diet, you know, keep things low on the food chain. God made it, eat it. If man made it in a factory, avoid it kind of a thing. And um, stay away from sugar, stay away from processed foods. And um, and that's going to help your blood sugar stabilize, which is going to help your anemia get better. Okay. And go find a chiropractor for your low back before it becomes a problem. I sure will, and thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thanks for mm-hmm. calling. Bye-bye. Nice Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Hang with me, everybody that I haven't gotten to yet. I will get to you in a minute. But first, we do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Call in number 712-770-4160. And the access code is 533-677-POUND. And you can find this information a bunch of different places. On my website, AskJulieRyan.com. It's on the homepage. Anywhere you download a podcast, we're on a bunch of different networks, dozens and dozens of networks. It's in the show notes. It's also in a blog. I release a a blog every week, and that's a question that somebody has submitted online, and then I answer it. And then there's call-in information on there. And then also on social media. On the day of the show, I always post on social media, hey, remember to call in. And I'm on Instagram at Ask Julie Ryan, and I'm also on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. So um, you can follow me both of those places. When you're on my site, sign up for my blog. Again, it's a question that that somebody has submitted, and then I I answer it. And also sign up for a private session, and then I'll have you for a whole hour. And we'll get a lot of things done, and it's also really fun. We have a ball when we do that. Lots of laughing. Even if it's something serious you want to talk about, we still have a ball. So here's the question this week. It was submitted from Lisa, and Lisa lives in Springfield, Missouri. And she asked, hi, Julie. I got some sad news today from my mom. She said when she and her husband got home after a day of events, her old blind miniature pincher Cassie was missing. My parents live in the country but have neighbors around them and let Cassie stay outside that day. Since she's blind, she usually doesn't stray. My mom and her husband looked all over and called for Cassie but didn't find her. While searching, my mom noticed the neighbors watching them look for Cassie. She thought they were acting suspiciously. And then in parentheses, Lisa wrote, by the way, there's a horrible history with this neighbor that involved a terrible injury to Cassie in an animal abuse lawsuit, in parentheses. She went on to say, later in the middle of the night, my mom said something spoke to her and said the neighbor killed Cassie. 
Julie, would you please connect with Cassie and tell us what happened? My mom is so extremely sad about her dog. Thank you, Lisa. And here's my response. Hi, Lisa. I'm so sorry to hear about Cassie and can only imagine the grief your mother and her husband are feeling. Anyone who's ever lost a cherished pet knows how heartbreaking it can be. In order to get some information for you, I connected with you and through you with Cassie. She is no longer alive. She told me she wandered off to die and did not suffer. I've heard often how animals are prone to hide or wander off as they're dying and decided to investigate the reason why they do this. There's a lot of information on the topic, and the following does a good job of summarizing the pertinent information. Wagwalking.com said, don't you love that, that um, website? Wagwalking.com, I thought that was cute said, quote, even though dogs are domesticated, they have natural instincts to survive in the wild. Dogs in the wild did what was necessary to protect themselves throughout their lives. They hunted, roamed, stayed in a pack, and defended themselves against predators. A dog whose body is failing him and who doesn't have the ability to fight back sometimes hides. His instinct is to isolate himself for protection, end quote. The article went on to say, quote, if your dog hides at the end of his life, it's not because he didn't love you or consider you his best friend. Even if you would have given him every comfort at the end, he was just following an instinct as a dog to hide for protection, end quote. Please let your mother know Cassie's still around her just now in spirit form. If your mom thinks she momentarily sees Cassie out of the corner of her eye, thinks she hears or feels her, she is. It'll be Cassie letting her know she's close by. Hope you and your mom find this information helpful and most of all, comforting. I had heard that a lot from people whose dogs were dying, that they would either run away and they'd never find them again, or they would find them hidden someplace. And I thought, I I wonder why they do that. I figured, you know, it would be online and it was. So there you have it. Thanks, Lisa, for submitting that question. Okay, let's go to our next caller. And I believe it's Debbie. Hi, Debbie. There you are. Hi. Yes, I am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus. Yes. We, we talked about that. That's right. As we were getting ready for the show, because I grew up in Worthington right next door. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, good. Well, thanks for joining us this evening. You got a question for me? I do. It's for my husband. He ruptured his quadricep uh, tendon on his right leg Monday. And he's got to have surgery. I didn't know if there was anything you could do to help him or... Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Where's he having surgery? Um, Or or orthopedic one. I know, but is it in a hospital or a surgery center? It's a surgery center. Okay. All right. I was just wondering which hospital if he was going to one which one so what they're going to do is they're just going to repair it and that's what I'm watching happen I'm watching an energetic healing happen on that quad and it is repairing those fibers and stitching it back together so this will help when he has his surgery it will be a breeze because every all the foundation will be laid energetically so they just have to go in and do it he'll make a full recovery he'll be he'll be fine Afterwards, they'll, they'll do is some physical be, therapy. Is it going to be a long recovery? I don't think so. They'll do some physical therapy with him. I think you'll be surprised how quickly he recovers. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, Tell him to behave and do what the okay. physical therapist tells him to do. Okay. <laughs> Tell him to be a good patient. <laughs> but, He's yeah. been good. He's been good. Yeah. Okay. No, I think he'll I'm make just... a full recovery. Great. Okay, well, thank you very much. Good luck. Let us know how he does. I will. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All righty. Let's see who else do we have. I've got somebody from the 404 area code. That's it. That's Hot Lana. Who's that? 404 area code. Hello, hello. Can you get off mute and talk to me? Hello. 404-246. Oh, there you are. Hello? Hi. Hi. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Najee. Hi, Najee. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Are you living in Atlanta? Yes. 
terrific. 404 area code was the, was the clue that I got on that. <laughs> got a question for me? Yeah. Um, dang, I, I didn't actually think you were going to pick up on my line. I'm confused with which one to ask now. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I had um, a past life question. Okay. Those are fun. Yeah, what I was trying it? to see who maybe I was in the past life. Kind of help me figure out what I'm doing now, you know, because um, I'm running a business and different things like that. And I'm just trying to see how everything connects, like all the little life trials and different things that I went through. Like, what, who was I in the past life? Okay. We all live thousands of past lives, hundreds if not thousands of past lives. So the way that, that it's best to do past lives is let's figure out one question that we can ask. Like, does Najee have any past lives in which you know, he was a plumber, <laughs> just, you know, just for conversation's sake. So let's come up with a question, and then we'll come up with an answer for that. And I'll ask okay. which past life correlates the most. So what's a question we could ask? Does my life path correlate now as being a, a musician, I guess, and a, a business owner of music go with anything in my past life, I guess, was I a musician or something like that, maybe? In the music business. So how about, was Najee in the music business in, or a musician or in the music business? Either one of those? Okay, in a past life. Okay, so what I do, Najee, is I envision myself going down this endless hallway with these really tall ceilings. They're like 40 feet tall. And there are 12 by 12 mirrors on either side of the walls. And they all represent a different lifetime. So there are lots of mirrors that have come out from the wall like they're on a hydraulic arm. And those all represent different lifetimes in which you're a musician. There's bunches of them, bunches of them. So show me the one that correlates the most. Okay, it's coming out the furthest down on the left. Let me go down there and let me see. Okay, you're going to laugh about this. The year was 1776. You know, sounds like when America was founded. Let me see where you lived. You lived in Munich in Germany in that lifetime and you were a cellist you played the cello wow. so how did that how does that correlate with what Najee has going on in this current lifetime well, so um, you you were in, what I'm getting is you you were an integral part of a bigger picture of creating music it's not like you were a solo musician in that lifetime are you involved in like a band or a, you know, a group or something where you're an integral part of helping create music. You're, you facilitate or you're involved with it, but you're not necessarily the person that's doing the solos. Right. Right. I'm like, a, I actually started a marketing promoting business and I actually signed a couple of artists and I manage and promote them and help there people get a chance to, get on and be seen by bigger labels and this like that and get on the radio, you know, is actually what I do. And cool. the yeah. people call me a producer, but I don't actually produce. Like I just hear it. And it's funny you said yeah. strings because that's like my thing. Whenever I hear strings or trumpets or saxophones or anything like that, like it just touches my spirit and I'm like telling the producer, Hey, add this and put this and yeah. do a little of this. And I'm not, you know I what got- I mean? Yeah, I got goosebumps when you just said when it, you know whenever you hear strings. There's definitely a correlation between you being a cellist in that lifetime. And again, schedule a private consult with me. Go to AskJulieRyan.com. Pick a date and time. We can explore this. It would be really fun because there's so many lifetimes that are represented in this hallway for you that it would be it'll be fun to explore what those are and see how they you know, correlate with what's going on. And the other thing, fun thing that, about past lives is normally we'll get dates and times and information where, um, when we have more time on a private consult, where we can Google and corroborate the information we get with <laughs> historical documents. So that's really fun too. So consider okay. doing that. But yeah, absolutely. You were a cellist in 1776 in Munich. Great question. Okay. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. And then we have another caller from the 218 area code. Hi, this is Julie. Who's this? Hey, Julie. Hi, I'm Lou. How you doing? I'm great. How are you, Lou? 
Hey, not bad, thank you. Hey, Julie, I hope, I hope I'm not wasting your time here, but I'm calling on behalf of my daughter. My daughter yeah. lives with myself and my wife. Mm-hmm. And she left me a note here of what, you know, what her problem is. And it, it says here she has an open sore between her, this is on her foot, between her okay. pinky and second toe that okay. will not heal for the past six weeks. Mm-hmm. It is bright red, inflamed, and exceedingly painful. Okay. As of two days ago, a uh, sudden onset uh, of the calf became exceedingly painful, mm-hmm. swollen, swollen to, I think that's, that's the, I'm not sure what that word is. It's uh, oh, swollen to twice its size, bright red, and a lot of heat. Cannot bear weight on the leg. When she takes, puts her feet up, it, it kind of eases off. Mm-hmm. So basically... Like a, sounds to me like she may have an infection. She may have like a, you know, a um, uh, blood poisoning thing going on from that sore. What's your daughter's name, Lou? Uh, Beth Ann. We call it Beth, but it is Beth Ann. Yeah. All right. I'm going to connect to you, and then I'm going to connect to Beth from you. I'll get her oh, on okay. my radar, and then I'll be able to get a visual of what's going on. Where are you calling Thank us you. from? Yeah, where are uh, you calling Lake, from? Lake Wales, Florida. Okay. All right. So is that where Beth is, too? Is she with you down in Florida? Yeah, you said she lives yeah, with she's you. right the same house with us. Yep. Okay. All right. Here we go. Laser beams heading from Alabama south. Going behind me, got you, got Beth. Okay, yeah, I think she needs to see a doctor. Sounds to me like she might have some some um, infection going up her leg, like blood poisoning thing, and that's really nothing I, to mess with. I uh, agree. I, I would get her into the doctor. If she starts running a really bad fever, Lou, I would mm-hmm. take her to the emergency room. Okay. But I would I would get her in to see a doctor tomorrow. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, yeah. Julie, thank you. I appreciate okay. taking the time like that. You thank bet. You. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure to- it's way. a pleasure talking to you. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, you do a lot of good out there. So, uh, again, oh. thank you so much. You bet. Take care, Lou. You, take- you do, tell- dear. Tell Beth we hope she feels better. Oh, Bye-bye. will do. All righty. Take care. Okay, let me see if there's anybody that I have missed. I think I've gotten everybody. Let me see. We've got a couple minutes left. Uh, okay. I think Janet, you're still on. Let me come back to you and see. Hi, Janet. Oh, you know what, Janet? I'm sorry to do this to you. Yeah. I've got Susie. Let me let me put you on hold. And I've got Susie. Hi, Suze. Hi, Susie. Hi, Julie. Hi, girl. I forgot. I I didn't forget you. I just oh, tried to figure you. out who I hadn't gotten to. We've got a lot of people on tonight. So yeah, it's amazing. Come. Um, come from San Francisco Bay Area, yeah. and um, I was going to see if you could uh, just check out my tendon on my right ankle and see how it's looking, and maybe shoot at some of its uh, the healing energy that you have. Yeah, I sure will. Okay, Thank you. tendon, right ankle. You bet. All right, got you on my radar. Yeah, it's interesting, Suze. I'm looking at you from behind. I'm. Getting the energy. Can you get me off speaker, please? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. You're not on speaker. Oh, okay. I'm getting feedback. It's a regular phone. All right. So, okay. All right. Just centrifuge energy. It's healing. It is it's okay. Healing. So it's looking yeah. better. Yeah. It's okay. Better. Um, you know, I just wanted to ask you. Last week, you told me to look up the NNT number for a drug, and I I spent literally like couple hours calling all around pharmacists and then no one knew and I even called the manufacturer is that because the drug is came out in 2015 is that why they don't know an NNT no. number they it, it should be did you look online yeah I did and I actually called I Google I mean I googled it and then usually I can find it but then I couldn't find it so that's why I called all these different pharmacists and Caremark and then I called the manufacturer and even talked to a pharmacist at the manufacturer and they were saying the, she couldn't tell me what it was. And, she didn't and, know. They have it at the manufacturer. Talk to somebody in their research department. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody in um, compliance, compliance, because they have okay. to have that number in order to get it with the um, to get the drug approved with the FDA. 
Okay, so thank what, you. What we're talking about, everybody, the number needed to treat is how many people have to take a medicine in order for it to be effective with one person. So the higher the number, the less effective the medication. And that's information that's done in clinical studies before the FDA will approve of a drug. So Okay. Well, yeah, yeah it was very strange they had not to, to have tell it. me. <laughs> they had to have it, Susie. It's, okay. It's there. Just, you just weren't in the right department yet. Go, to, go into government compliance. Okay, and great. Thank you. Go, okay. Take care. Bless you. Okay. You bye-bye. Too. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Uh-huh. Okay, Janet, I'm coming back. Here you yeah, are. Hi, Hi Julie. Janet. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Yeah, you had another question for me. I've got about a yeah, minute left. I did. I, I wanted about the seizure disorder. Yeah, what, and what was your question about that? Um. I have to go off the medication because my insurance company won't pay for it anymore. And I just wondered, is this, is this going to be a dangerous thing for me or am I going to do fine without the medication? I think you're going to do fine without the medication. I would, again, focus on a whole foods diet. You know, food is medicine. And um, two that I really like are the Bulletproof diet. If you Google Bulletproof, and look at their diet. They've got a food chart that you can follow. And it's basically if God made it, eat it. If man made it in a factory or, or you're making something with factory-made ingredients, stay away from it. And then the other one I like is Mark Hyman. Um, and he his is Eat Fat, Get Thin. And if you Google Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N-M-D, and go to his website, I really think you can control a lot of this with what you're eating. Okay. So I, I would look at that and see if that helps. Well, Alrighty. thank you very much for answering that question. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Thanks for hanging in there and letting me come back to you. Okay. Well, thank you, Julie. You bet. Bye-bye. Okay. I think we got everybody on. I think that was 13 or 14 people. That's a record, you guys. That was a lot of people that I told. made it really fun for me. I hope it's fun for you to listen Thanks again to everybody that called in. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thanks to all of you who are listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks Take for care, joining everybody. us. Be Bye-bye. sure to follow Julie on Twitter at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. For information on how you can ask Julie your question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com.